William Dalrymple is truly a legend in his own lunchtime. Yesterday, Monday the 5th of October, saw the publication of William's latest book, an epic work called Nine Lives in Search of the Sacred and Modern India. Today he embarks on a one-year tour to promote his work. First stop, Cheney's Manor, for the Watford Observer and Chorleywood Bookshop Literary Lunch. I was born and brought up in Scotland and hardly travelled at all as a teenager. And then suddenly, age 18, found myself in India. And I think it had a far more sort of devastating effect on me than it otherwise would have done. My life really cleaves in two around the date, the 26th of January 1984, the day I arrived there. Everything since then has been Indocentric, looking towards India. This latest book is a book about how the many diverse forms of Indian religion, Hindu, Muslim, Jain, Buddhist and so on, uh, are changing as India transforms itself. India is now about to overtake America by 2050, will overtake America as the world's second largest economy. And the whole place is in a, an amazing point of transformation, of metamorphosis. And so I've travelled around talking to nine individuals who each represent a different sort of spiritual or devotional or religious tradition. Uh, a Teum dancer, a possession dancer from Kerala, a sacred prostitute from Karnataka, an idol maker from Tamil Nadu, a Buddhist monk from Dharamsala, a Jain nun from Karnataka, a sacred prostitute, all these different forms of, uh, of diverse and sometimes diametrically opposed forms of, of, of following a religious journey. These nine people tell their own stories. The event is to sail out, but before we all tuck into sea bass and chocolate cream brulee, we ask William to sum up what does his world tour involve. I'm now embarking on a, on a tour for a year. We're going to go around India this month and Pakistan. Uh, we're off to Australia in the new year, uh, then back to England uh, for a 20-day tour in May, uh, and then America in June. Elsewhere at the Barbican last week, we had many of the people from the book. Um, the ones who are singers or dancers came on stage and did their thing. The, the bowels of Bengal, who are busking madmen, um, did their songs. The Dayam dancers from Kerala did their dance. The uh, Fakirs from Pakistan sort of catawalled in this strange castrati falsetto. <laughs> and uh, the lovely Shushila Raman, who's a Mercury Prize winning vocalist, sang Tivaram hymns from Tamil Nadu. One of the strange coincidences that turned out was that uh, Elizabeth, who owns the manor here uh, at Cheney's, uh, turns out to, from her mother's side, to be um, uh, Armenian from Calcutta. And that many of the places I'm writing about in the book uh, are, uh, uh, are places where her family used to own land before settling in Chorley Wood, the most unlikely uh, journey they've made. When I was writing this book, uh, I stopped going out uh, for the three months that uh, I was writing it. I put myself in sort of monastic seclusion. Uh, wrote all day and to recover at night I sat watching the BBC Little Dorrit series which weirdly enough was filmed in this very garden so <laughs> it's been a strange full circle here yeah, to Janie's.